Francisco Hernandez. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question is to the Minister for the Public Service. Does she agree with the comments made by the Prime Minister yesterday that, quote, central government focuses on must-haves, not nice-to-haves, end quote? If so, were the more than 6,500 and counting public servants whose jobs have been cut simply nice-to-haves? Honourable Nicola Willis. Madam Speaker, I agree with the Prime Minister's full quote from his speech to local government New Zealand, which was, quote, for ratepayers, it's simple. The central government focuses on must-haves, not nice-to-haves, and we expect local government to do the same. To the second part of the member's question, I would dispute the member's number, and I would not use that characterisation, nor would the Prime Minister. And in fact, I find the inference that any member of this House would refer to a human being as nice to have is objectionable. Well, that's what you're calling Supplementary. Francisco Hernandez, the question will be heard in quiet. Is staffing the Ministry for Regulation a must-have, but staffing the police, the Environmental Protection Authority and Oranga Tamariki nice-to-haves? Honourable Nicola Willis. Madam Speaker, again, I reject the characterisations in the, qu in the question. For one thing, this is a government that is increasing frontline police officers by 500. And for another, I would put to the member that while his party may have the view, be of the view that there's never a piece of red tape that the government shouldn't say yes to, we on this side of the House are pro-growth, pro-development and anti-red tape, and that's the approach we're taking to regulation. Supplementary. Francisco Hernandez. Is the fact that she only found out about the average salaries of the Ministry for Regulation yesterday a sign that she's happy to justify cutting thousands of jobs while being ignorant of what happens in her coalition partner's pet ministries? Well, Madam Speaker, Nicola Willis. If, the, um, if the member is asking me to assess average salaries by cohort, I could share with him that I've had some work done in my office, and apparently the average salary of a Green MP is a little over 180000 although I would note that that number excludes the salary of Darlene Tana. Supplementary. I, I, I don't... I, I know what the point of order is going to be, and I would make note that the last comment that the Minister used was unnecessary in the context of the question that that manager... It's pretty funny, though. Point, point, point of order, Ricardo Menendez March. Um, excluding the final comment, the Minister did not even get close to addressing the question and launched on a political attack. I think the bare minimum we should expect is at least addressing the question before she launches some political attacks. Thank you. Well, I think I've, I've expressed my uh, ruling about uh, the, the member's comment. Um, in terms of us answering the question, uh, there is a difference of opinion between the two groups, and the members might not like the minister's answer, but the minister did give an answer. Right Honourable Winston Peters, is this a point of order or a supplementary question? No, it's, it's question? a supplementary question. Okay. Uh, by the way, um, Finance Minister, is it a fact that those 180,000 salaries are the highest salaries they have ever earned in their lives or will ever earn in their lives? Oh, that, I, that, um, no. Minister does not need to answer that question. That question was crea will create chaos. Supplementary. Francisco Hernandez. Supplementary. Quiet, please, we have a question. Yeah. Francisco Hernandez. How can she justify finding out about the eye-wateringly high average salaries at the Ministry for Regulation yesterday when her government has justified cutting thousands of jobs as wasteful spending? Honourable Nicola Willis. Well, Madam Speaker, uh, as I have said in answer to other questions in question time today, our government has been on a mission to drive more value from government spending, and as part of that, we have delivered $23 billion worth of reprioritisation over the next four years uh, in our budget. That included a significant exercise to reduce the baseline costs of government agencies. We view it as our responsibility to do that so that we can deliver better outcomes and more responsible economic management. Francisco Hernandez. Does she agree with ACT Party leader David Seymour that, quote, ministers can be so focused on their pet projects 
that they lose sight of whether they will improve New Zealanders' lives, end quote. And if so, how will she, as Minister for the Public Service, ensure that hardworking public servants are not sacrificed in the name of pet projects like the Ministry for Regulation? Honourable Nicola Willis. Well, um, I think, uh, Madam Speaker, that David Seymour makes a good point, and we have only to think about the energy crisis we are now experiencing to understand what can happen when ministers have pet projects at the expense of good decision-making. 